Okay, welcome back to the Chaos Corner. This is going to be part four of the Halloween Village. And this is the Vulture Tree. So there are three parts. There's the tree and two little vultures. I'm only going to show painting of one vulture because you'll do the same thing on the other one. And the tree is going to kind of be a, a mix of um, the way you do fashion hues without using fashion hues um, and maybe some dry brushing. Um, so you'll need some paper towels at the ready. And what I do is I take my paper towels and they're those smaller ones where it's supposed to be pull out to fit to size. And I take them and I cut them in half. So now I have four paper towels at the ready. And then I'm going to start with the tree. I'm going to put out some brown. And this one is chocolate bar. I'll be using three different colors. Chocolate bar, brown, and antique gold. Maybe a gray, which I forgot to get. So maybe, maybe four colors, depending. Uh, yeah, we'll do a dove gray. Just kind of pick your colors, how you think you're going to like them. Okay. And then you're going to add some water. Because you want the acrylic to be a little bit more runny than what it comes out of the bottle as. But not as runny as watercolor. To be able to do the what I, I call the fashion hues technique. Basically what that is, is you paint on the color and then you wipe back. So you're going to paint on in small areas because you don't want to go too far and then have it dry on you and you can't wipe it back at all. And what this does is it gets the darker colors into the nooks and the crannies and then you wipe it away leaving the darker colors in the nooks and the crannies. Okay. I'll do that one more time. And Try to go somewhere where there's a few more nooks and crannies. Usually a little rule I follow is I paint until I don't get any more paint off of my brush and I don't go back to the well before wiping back. Now this is going to be a, a series of, of working from your darkest colors to your lightest colors. And I've left paper towel behind. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do all that and then I'll be back. Okay. There it is. All done with the brown and the white back. I ended up actually more splotching or dabbing than actually wiping because with the um, with the new base coat method that I did all these in, it was a little slick and it would take a little bit too much paint away if I actually wiped. So I just did a dabbing motion to damp back some. Now it's important to let that dry. So while that's drying. I'm going to do one of the vultures. And with the vultures, 
if you look up vultures, they're kind of a blackish brown with some white and some kind of like peach coloration. So I'm going to start with, well, I think I'll start with the body and we'll do some black and the cream, I think. I got something on his head. And what I did was I went and I looked it up and there, some of their, their longer wings, uh, the flight feathers, are more white. and just a little bit of brown, I think. Into that area. Give it a little bit more depth. be so happy when the air conditioner is fixed. Maybe I won't stick to things. Okay, and I didn't use white. I'm using a vanilla because I want to be a little bit more straight hair. I want to be just a little bit more dark. And I'm kind of purposely going on a little messy because I want to kind of pretend like it's the, the feathers that are causing the, the look. whitish color up around in here. And then with the cream still on my brush, I dipped it in some of the brown watered down to kind of get some undertone and then I think I'm going to keep my brush dirty still and I'm pouring out some flesh tone I'll get just a little bit of that with my dirty brush bring him up a little closer here in just a minute. So there is the vulture. Kind of easy to do. I think I'm going to put a little bit more brown 
on the wings. Just to kind of get away from so much black. accidentally drag some of the cream up on that one side, but that's okay. I dropped him. If you look at birds' feathers, they're not just one solid color, so dragging some color from the other places isn't a bad idea. There we go. I gotta fix his head because I I touched it and I took some of the coloring off. Okay. I'm gonna leave the vulture's beak black because most of their beaks are kind of a blackish brown. So I'll just leave it the black and go on. Okay, so now we have our next brown. It's raining outside. Hello? My brown doesn't want to come out. There we go. That one's definitely going to need some more water. So again, we're back to the tree. We're back to adding some water to the acrylic paint because we want it to be a little bit more runny than what it comes out of the jar. But you don't want it as runny as watercolor. And we're going to do the same thing where we apply it into small areas and then dab it away. And sometimes when you first start doing this, you think, oh, I haven't really changed it. It's really not adding anything. But when you get, get done, you set, step back and you're like, oh, wow, that is a big difference. So again, I'm going to pause and I'll be back when I have all of the brown done again. And I'm back. Okay. Did one thing with the vultures and I did some black dots for their beady little eyes. I just used a toothpick and black black paint. Then I would picked out, I kind of wanted a yellowish tone but not completely yellow. So I thought an antique gold yellow was going to do it for me but it was just like mustard yellow. So that was like way too much. So I took the antique gold and the brown and I mixed it together to get this color and I like it much better and same thing paint it on 
Now, if at any stage you like the color that you have, you don't have to do all these color um, layers if you don't want to. If you if you put on the the first dark brown and that's the color you want, you like how it looks, stop. You put on the second layer and you like how it looks, stop. This is your creation. I'm just going for kind of a more dead tree, but I want more more color, more definition, I think, is the word I'm looking for. And I didn't want to use that sandstone brown that I've been using in everything else. So... This is a nice... change of brown. And I did a little I did a little sample down here to make sure I was gonna like it and that's how I knew the uh, gold yellow was just too much yellow for me. And I was kind of afraid that was going to happen, so that's why I tested it off camera. That way if I was going to scratch that color all together, then we wouldn't have to watch the sampling of it. So okay, I'm going to finish out this portion of the tree and I'll be back when it's dry and we're going to do a dry brushing of some gray. Okay, time to dry brush the tree. One thing I didn't tell you folks, um, when I did a base coat on all of these pieces in the tree, I went in and base coated inside across from the eyes on each side so that way you wouldn't have a whole bunch of glaring white coming through. So there's base coat all on the inside of the tree up around the eyes. So like from here to about here on the inside of the tree is base coated in that black as well um, to help keep the um, the white from being so glaringly obvious and I see a spot that I missed so I'm just gonna go in real quick and just brush on some normal black paint in that area so that way when you have a light up inside there flickering it's not flickering bright white okay so now it is time to dry brush some gray It's alive! That is coming out of that cap all on its own. Something's going on in there. Alright, so. Dove Gray. You load up your brush. And you'll see that a lot of other people that do dry brushing will take their brush and wipe it off on to a paper towel to kind of show you to be able to see that they've gotten enough off of their their brush And then I'm just feathering across. To 
kind of get a more dead wood look. I'll get this first half done, show you, and then go finish off camera. So there is the front half of the tree dry brushed. It's looking kind of nice and gnarly and old. I'm going to go finish up and I'll be back. And done. Okay, there is the tree finished with about one, two, three, four coats of color, but I think it's well worth it when you see all the different uh, nooks and crannies and the colorations. It's not just a plain old flat brown tree. It's got some depth to it. I did one small thing and I dry brushed some of that gray onto the vulture head because their head was just a little bit too comical. Now I will not be attaching the vultures in this particular episode because I don't know where exactly I want them facing or how I want them facing. You know, I might decide to have one facing one way and one facing the other way. Because depending on where I put the tree, they, you know, I might, I'd have the tree like this. There we go. I might have the tree like that, or I might have the vultures facing the same way. I'll have to decide that when I put the village together. For that, um, if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification button so you get a notice every time I upload. Um, like this video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!